Good morning. Today, I'm going to read from <clears throat> Sometimes a Great Notion by Ken Kesey. And of course, most of you know him from as the author of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I also love. But this book, um, I this is my favorite Kesey book. Not that he had very many, but... Um, this is about a family that has uh, works in a logging operation, and Kesey just fa captured the uh, family dynamics so well. I thought I, I loved that about this book. It has, also has one of the most incredible scenes in it that I have ever read. One that stayed with me. Uh, so here we go. Along the western slopes of the Oregon coastal range. Come look. The hysterical crashing of tributaries as they merge into the Wakanda Aga River. The first little washes flashing like thick rushing winds through sh sheep sorrel and clover. Ghost fern and nettle. Shearing, cutting, forming branches. Then through bearberry and sal salmonberry, blueberry and blackberry. The branches crashing into creeks, into streams. Finally, in the foothills, through tamarack and sugar plum, shittim bark and silver spruce, and the green and blue mosaic of Douglas fir, the actual river falls 500 feet, and look, opens out upon the fields. Metallic at first, seen from the highway down through the trees, like an aluminum rainbow, like a slice of alloy moon. Closer becoming organic, a vast smile of water with broken and rotting pilings jagging along the, along both gums, foam clinging to the lips. Closer still, it flattens into a river, flat as a street, cement gray with a texture of rain, flat as a rain-textured street, even during flood season because of a channel so deep and a bed so smooth, no shallows to set up buckwater rapids, no rocks to rile the surface, nothing to indicate movement except the swirling clots of yellow foam skimming seaward with the wind, and the threshing groves of flooded bam bent taut and trembling by the pull of silent, dark momentum. A, s a river smooth and seeming calm, hiding the cruel file edge of its current beneath a smooth and calm seeming surface. The highway follows its northern bank, the ridges follow its southern. No bridges span its first ten miles, and yet across, on that southern shore, an ancient two-story wood frame house rests on a structure of tangled steel, of wood and earth and sacks of sand, like a two-story bird with split-shake feathers sitting fierce in its tangled nest. Look. Rain drifts about the windows. Rain filters through a haze of yellow smoke, issuing from a mousy stone chimney into slanting sky. The sky runs gray, the smoke wet yellow. Behind the house, up in the shaggy hem of mountainside, these colors mix in windy distance, making the hillside itself run a muddy green. On the naked bank between the yard and hummingbirds and humming river's edge, a pack of hounds pads back and forth, whimpering with cold and brute frustration, whimpering and barking at an object that dangles out of their reach over the water, twisting and untwisting, swaying swiftly at the end of a line tied to the tip of a large fur pole jutting out of a top story window, twisting and stopping and slowly untwisting in the gusting rain, eight or ten feet above the flood's current, a human arm tied at the wrist, just the arm, look, disappearing downward at the frayed shoulder where an invisible dancer performs twisting pirouettes for an enthralled audience, just the arm turning there above the water for the dogs on the bank, for the blinking rain, for the smoke, the house, the trees, and the crowd calling angrily from across the river, Stamper, hey, God damn you anyhow, Frank Stamper, and for anyone else who might care to look. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.